Okay, my name is Russell Cromat. Uh, today we are going to be presenting Basilisk, which is a risk management framework tracking and reporting tool. Uh, presenting alongside me is Joseph Jarvis, Khan, and our project lead, Leonardo uh, We were mentored for this project by Dr. Belova, as I'm sure you know, uh, and our TA, LeBlanc. Uh, this slide was done for the Naval Undersea Warfare Center, Division Newport, um, led by Connor Vick. So one of the first things we're often asked when we discuss our project with other people is what is RMF? What is Risk Management Framework? Risk Management Framework is essentially a six-step process used to certify that software projects meet cybersecurity standards. Um, so we have one given Risk Management Framework package that's broken up into six individual steps, and then all of those steps are broken up into individual tasks. So our client was looking for a solution to help manage uh, an ever-growing library of risk management framework packages, working with around or over 100 packages at any given moment. Um, these packages contain a large amount of data, so what they wanted us to do was create a web application working in conjunction with a database that could be utilized to track and manage their written risk management framework packages. So what we have done is we have created a database custom tailored to suit the needs of the RMF package, as well as a web application that allows the user to add new packages or personnel members into the database, uh, assign personnel members to risk management packages or individual tasks, um, view tasks and packages, modify said tasks, or generate reports on different uh, objects. So to give you an idea of what we're working with and what we have uh, come up with, uh, this is the dashboard view. So upon launching the application, this is the view of what the user is presented with. We can see on the left side there, the user has clicked on the package third package, and that has brought up on the right side of the screen all of the different active tasks that are currently within that package. Uh, if the user were to click on an individual task, it would bring up a task view. In this view, the user can see information such as the start and due date of the task, or the personnel member assigned to it, or even make individual changes to the data associated with that. This is our Add Packages screen. Uh, at the top half of the screen here, we have all of the different packages currently within the application. And in the bottom half, we have a form that the user can fill out in order to add a new package to the application. Uh, our form for adding a personnel member to the application looks much similar to this one. And this is one of our reports screen. This is in particular for managerial reports. Um, through this screen, the user is able to create a report on a package or a subset of packages or all RMF packages, giving information such as the current completion level of all the different packages. To head a little deeper into our project, we wanted to show a full overview of our database, just to give the, you guys an idea of the scope of what we're working with here, as well as all the different uh, interconnectivity that's happening within our database. We're going to break this down a little further by looking at the personnel table. Uh, we can see that the personnel table is connected to our scans table, roles table, task tracker table, and organization table. What this means is that a personnel member, for instance, would have an organization that they're associated with. And we keep track of these relationships using what's called foreign keys. So a personnel member might have an organization slot within their table, and then that slot would be filled by an ID number related to a given organization that is within the organization table. Uh, without further ado, I'm going to pass it off to Joe Jarvis, and he's going to talk about, about our dropdown component. All right. <clears throat> Hello, everybody. My name is uh, Joe Jarvis, and yeah, like you said, I'll be going over the methodology of our project. Uh, more specifically, uh, one of the first elements would be the dropdown component. Now, what's so special about a dropdown component, right? Well, uh, we utilize it almost everywhere within our application. We use it within the app packages page. We utilize it within the app personnel page. We also see it in numerous places throughout the dashboard and also within the reports functionalities. Uh, so what's special about our dropdown um, that isn't supported within React Bootstrap's native dropdowns is that they don't have um, the ability to fetch data from the database. So um, using React, we're able to customize our own uh, dropdown component, uh, have it fetch uh, data based on a certain parameter that we'll give it, and uh, we're able to utilize this uh, dropdown component everywhere throughout our application. So for example, we can see that we have uh, package type table, and this exists within our database. So if we were to send the dropdown component a package type parameter, we would see that the dropdown that is given to us uh, consists of the same data that exists within the database. Uh, on, the on the topic of component reuse, uh, we also have our personnel reports. 
Uh, we can also see the drop downs utilized within this report on the right hand side here. And if you guys remember from the dashboard page, we had the task view, uh, the task selector view. We can also see this same component reutilized uh, within our personnel reports. So um, administrators can actually see uh, what tasks the user is assigned. A little background for the personnel report. Um, the functionality is to select a user, uh, select a time frame, and if you generate a report, it'll tell you the percentage of tasks that are assigned uh, to the user, as well as uh, clearly bring up a uh, selection of tasks. So as an administrative user, I could go in and select the tasks and modify them as I wish, as if I were uh, viewing it from their viewpoint, from the dashboard. On the topic of um, task data management, we have task prerequisites. So within packages, there's a large number of tasks, and most of them actually have task prerequisites. And what this means is that certain tasks must be completed before tasks will be shown uh, to the dashboard. So as we can see here, we have uh, the task with IDs of 7 and 8 at the bottom of the top table there. And they have an uh, element in the prereq column that says uh, 2. That means that the task at position 2 needs to be completed uh, before these tasks will actually arrive to the dashboard for the user to uh, modify as they wish. So if I were to mark the task at position 2 as complete, um, it would change its status to 1, which would be completed. And those prerequisites would be removed from that task column, meaning um, that the task will, those two tasks will now arrive on the dashboard for the user to modify. We also have automatically assigning start dates and due dates uh, for our packages and the tasks within them. So if uh, we were to add a package, it has an overall due date. And based on this due date, we need to automatically assign uh, start and due dates for every task within this package. So how we do this is we found the uh, relative impact distance from the package's due date uh, to the start date of each of the tasks. So um, to calculate the start date, we would take the package due date and subtract uh, the impact date distance uh, to arrive the start date. And to find the due date of the task, uh, we would just simply add the duration. So um, in theory, if we were to add a uh, package due date with December 31st of 2022, uh, we would expect that first task um, with an impact distance of 364 days to arrive at January 1st, which is exactly what we see here. If we had that duration of 60, we would arrive on March 2nd. And here we go with the demo. I'm going to pass it off to the IA. It's going to take over the control here. There we go. Okay. All right. Sorry about that, folks. So immediately upon opening the application, we'll be greeted with the uh, dashboard view. And as we can see here, um, it's of utmost priority to see the time critical tasks. So that's actually the column that's uh, automatically selected within the view. So as we can see here, we have a view of all the time uh, critical tasks sorted by uh, the closest due date. Um, on the right hand side. But for now, we're actually going to go ahead and add a package. So we're going to go to the top, click Add Package. And as we can see, we have a whole list of all the packages within our database. So if we were to click Submit, it'll actually tell us the uh, input fields that are required uh, to enter a package. So we're going to enter the EMAS ID, a name, and these are all the drop down components that will be fetching data from the database. We send it one parameter and it gets all the information we need. All right, we're going to enter that same uh, due date of December 31st of 2022. Go ahead and submit. Now, if you scroll to the top, we'll see that that new package has been added. It's been fetched from the database, and we can see it live right here in the uh, package table. So we'll take, us, we'll take ourselves over to the uh, dashboard again. We see that new tasks have actually arrived on the right-hand side uh, within our critical task view. But we just want to look at the package that we added. We don't want to look at all the time critical tasks. So we're going to go ahead and do um, Say, for example, you really don't have an easy time finding these packages, right? There's a lot of packages within this list. Let's try to filter these, these things out. Uh, first of all, we can select any column and sort uh, by ascending or descending order. 
We can also sort the packages by uh, whether they're recently modified or not with this uh, toggle. We can also even just search for the package by its name or any of the uh, elements within these columns. And if even that doesn't do it for you, you can select the specific user that the package is associated with at the top right. And we'll see uh, packages at the bottom there. So I'm going to go ahead and select it. And now we can see all of our tasks that we've just added to the uh, application. So let's go ahead and open up Create Con Ops. Uh, we can do a number of things with the task. This is our selected task view on the right hand side, so uh, we can modify information within the task. We can change the personnel that's associated to the task, so let's switch it over to Leslie. If we submit the task info, we're greeted with who made the change, a timestamp, and um, what change was exactly made. Say, for example, we want to change the date. Well, if we try to change it, it actually gives us a uh, notification saying that we need to add a uh, reason for our change. So now that we've added a reason uh, and that we've overslept, uh, we can sufficiently change the due date. Uh, we can also see that this uh, new due date is reflected within the task view and within the task tracker with the new badge icon representing uh, the distance from the due date that the task is. We can also uh, uh, change the status of the task. So if we were to click Start Task, uh, this would mark this task status as in progress. And if we were to click Task Complete, if you remember correctly in the Methods view, I uh, demoed the prerequisites. The task got positioned to unlock two new tasks. That's why we see new tasks within the dashboard. Now John can go ahead and modify the tasks as he wishes. Beautiful. Uh, we can also go ahead and click um, Next Task within the Selected Task view. This will make it easier to streamline uh, completing tasks and find what next task needs to be complete. And that's about it for the uh, selected task view. Now let's head over to the reports functionality. Like I said before, uh, personnel reports uh, has uh, the reason that it exists because we want to see who's overworked and underworked uh, within our, um, we just want to see who's overworked and underworked. So we can select a user, we can select a time frame. And uh, we generate the report, we see uh, the percentage of tasks that were assigned to that specific user within that given time frame. And like I said before, uh, this task selector view is the same view that is reused from the dashboard. So we can go ahead as administrator, select any of the tasks, um, and modify them as we wish if we see need for change. All right, now that we've checked out the personnel reports, we're going to go ahead to the package reports. Uh, so the package report is really just an in-depth view of a particular package. Uh, this is just so you can see the status of the packages and all this, its steps. So if we were to go ahead and select a package at the top, uh, we're greeted with a uh, step completion percentage on the left-hand side of the screen. Uh, and we're also shown the critical path completion and the personnel assigned this package. So if I were to change somebody, uh, one of the tasks to Leslie, it would also show John and Leslie there. We can also see on the right-hand side that we have a Gantt chart. Um, there's actually a lot of dependencies on here, so we can go ahead and hide those with the hide dependencies toggle. We have a nice little legend at the bottom as well. It shows the uh, critical path is marked with red for its completion percentage and a dark gray for its uncompleted percentage, whereas the standard task would be highlighted in blue for its completed percentage and a light gray for its uncompleted percentage. Uh, we can also adjust the uh, X scale and the Y scale of the graph. So we can get a nice view of all the tasks if we wish. Just want to make that as small as we can. There we go. All right, now that we're done with the uh, package report, let's go ahead into the manage other report. So the whole premise of the uh, manage other report, uh, much like the package report, is to see uh, the package's status, but on a larger view. So instead of just seeing one package's status, uh, we'll instead see uh, many at a quick glance. So what we're seeing on the right-hand side here is a view of all the packages. And on the left-hand side is just the packages that will be included within the report. Uh, this is important because we don't want to generate a report on necessarily all the packages if we only need to see a few of them. So we can go ahead and click one of the packages on the right-hand side. This will simply bring it over to the left-hand view. Uh, say, for example, we have trouble finding a package. Uh, we can sort it just like we did in the dashboard with the uh, columns. Uh, you can sort by sending or descending, and you can also sort by recently modified, just like the dashboard. Um, we can also use the buttons at the top to select specific categories of packages that we'd like to add. So these uh, categories are actually stacked on top of each other, depending on what you had in the selected tasks or the packages. So say I already have one pack selected and I've completed, I clicked on the completed within this year uh, category. This would not only keep that original package in, but it will also add the other packages within here. I can also just clear all the packages if I wish. 
Um, I can select all the active packages and just remove one by clicking on it. Simple as that. Or I could uh, just add all of them. Add all the ones that are completed within this year and all the active packages. All right, now that we have all the packages that we wish to be included within the report, we can go ahead and select Export Report at the top in the green button. Oh, there we go. Ahead of me there. And now we have our report. So if you just want to zoom in so we can get a nice little look at the report here, we can see all the information that we ever need. We have the package name, uh, the EMAS ID, um, the program office, the package type. If we actually uh, go over to the right-hand side here, we can see um, that we have the current step that the ARMA package is within. Um, so we can see that uh, certain steps are completed within a certain percentage. And we can also see uh, comments that the packages have. This is based on um, the last modified tasks comment. Fortunately, because uh, none of those tasks have comments, it's just marked with a few hyphens there, so we can actually see that. We can also see the uh, package's completion status uh, with the due date and the timestamp. And there we go. That about does it for the demo. Thank you, guys. To wrap up, we want to go over some of the tools that we implemented in this project. So starting out with React. Uh, React is a big help in creating our uh, web application uh, in terms of operating simplicity as well as a means to create components that were not only modifiable um, but reusable. Um, we also use this uh, in order to have our components automatically update um, when different entries are changed within the database. So for instance, you saw that when a new package was added to the database, it automatically showed up in our list of current packages. We also use Node.js for our backend. This um, helped us manage all the different connections between our front end and our back end. Uh, and we also use this to assist us with some of the other computations that take place. The other tools we utilized were uh, MySQL for our database, GitLab for our repository, our Jira in order to help us manage our tasks. Discord for communication throughout the client team, Zoom or conference calls, as well as email to help manage communication with our, our client team, sorry, Discord for our team here. Uh, and this project was made with JavaScript, HTML, CSS for the front end, and SQL for the back end. Um, and with that, we'll open to questions. Any questions, please? Really awesome project. I, I was interested, it looks like there's a lot of um, interactions between different tables and all of that in your database. Did you employ the use of like an, uh, uh, an object resource management tool, like an ORM, or is all of your uh, backend using like raw uh, SQL queries? Uh, our backend is mostly using raw SQL queries. Any other questions? Going once, going twice. Okay. Thank you for that.